Good morning, Grade 7 learners! This is your school on the air in Mathematics 7. I am Teacher Mika. And I am Teacher Joy Me. Your Grade 7 radio teachers of Benigno S. Aquino National High School. Yes, today we will learn about principal roots and irrational numbers. Are you excited? And before we start, Kindly prepare your self-learning module, your pen, and paper to write your solutions and answers as we progress with our discussion. Also, look for a place in your home where you feel comfortable and safe. And most importantly, prepare yourself to watch and listen carefully. After going through this module, you are expected to Define principal root Describe principal roots and tell whether they are rational or irrational. Determine between what two integers the square root of a number lie. You have performed operations on the set of rational numbers. Now, let's check your prior knowledge. Get a piece of paper and pen, watch and listen carefully. We will give you time to perform the following operations. Do you have your answers? Let's check. For item letter A, the answer is 1 half. Remember to always simplify your answer. For item letter B, the answer is 6 and 1 over 6. For item letter C, 99.634. For item letter D, the answer is 30. And lastly, for item letter E, the answer is 14.25. Did you get all the answer? We hope we refresh your knowledge. Now, let's proceed to the first part of this module, which is Principal Roots and Its Nature. Turn your module on page 5. Let's explore. The square shown on the right has a side one unit long. Its area is one square unit. Make a square with area of four square units on the grid. What is the length of the side? Correct! The length of the side is two units. 
make a square with area of 9 square units on the grid. What is the length of the side? Correct! The length of the side is 3 units. Now, let's try this. Using a scientific calculator or your Android phone, input the following and get the equivalent value. We will give you time to answer this. Jot down your answers first and we will check them later. Moving on, a real number has its principal root that can be extracted when using the symbol that is known as radical sign. The combination of the radical sign together with the number is called a radical. The number under the radical sign is known as the radicand. Here it is. In square root of 36, the radicand is 36, and the principal root is 6. In square root of 2, the radicand is 2, and the principal root is 1.414235, and so on. Let's define more. A principal root is a number which produces a specific quantity when multiplied by itself. It is the positive nth root of a number. A perfect square is the square of a rational number. Another rational number is a number that can be expressed in the form a over b, where a and b are integers and b is not equal to zero. And lastly, Irrational number is a number whose decimal representation is neither terminating nor repeating. This number cannot be expressed as a quotient of integers. Let's analyze it. Earlier, you have tried to get the equivalent value of each of the following using a scientific calculator. You have also known that the equivalent value is called principal root. Here are the answers. Square root of 36 is 6. Square root of 64 is 8. Square root of 2 is 1.414235 and so on. 
square root of 50 is 7.071067 and so on. Square root of 81 is 9 and square root of 75 is 8.660254 and so on. Notice that some principal roots are whole numbers while some are decimal numbers. That means when a principal root is a whole number or fraction, then the principal root is described as rational. When a principal root is a non-terminating or non-repeating decimal number, just like our previous examples with the ellipsis or three dots, then the principal root is described as irrational. Let's conceptualize it. To determine whether a principal root is rational or irrational, we need to get first the principal root of a number. We can use a scientific calculator to get the exact principal root of a certain number and tell if it's rational or irrational. We can also use the concept of perfect squares to separate rational from irrational principal root. Consider the given below. All the derived products are considered perfect squares. Perfect squares are numbers that have rational numbers as principal roots. Moreover, taking the principal root of a number is like doing the reverse operation of squaring a number. Let's have some examples. For rational, when 1 times 1 is 1, then square root of 1 is 1. Now, since we have extracted a rational number which is 1, therefore, we can say that the principal root of square root of 1 is rational. When 2 times 2 is equal to 4, then square root of 4 is equal to 2. Now, since we have extracted a rational number which is 2, therefore, we can say that the principal root of square root of 4 is rational. When 3 times 3 is 9, then square root of 9 is 3. Now, since we have extracted a rational number which is 3, therefore we can say that the principal root of square root of 9 is rational. Also, when 4 fifths times 4 fifths is 16 over 25, then the square root of 16 over 25 is 4 fifths. Now, since we have extracted a rational number which is 4 fifths, therefore, we can say that the principal root of the square root of 16 over 25 is rational. Hence, the principal root of all perfect squares such as but not limited to square root of 1, square root of 4, square root of 9, square root of 16, square root of 25, square root of 36, square root of 49, square root of 64, square root of 81, square root of 100, and so on, which gives us this symbol. On the other hand, when a number is not a perfect square, then its principal root is irrational. We have square root of 2. Can you think of any number that when multiplied by itself will give an answer of 2? None. We can say then that 2 is not a perfect square. Therefore, the principal root of square root of 2 is irrational. Next, square root of 15. Can you think of any number that when multiplied by itself will give an answer of 15? None. We can say then that 15 is not a perfect square. Therefore, the principal root of square root of 15 is irrational. And lastly, the square root of 3 over 10. Can you think of any number that when multiplied by itself will give an answer of 3 over 10? None. 
We can say then that 3 over 10 is not a perfect square. Therefore, the principal root of square root of 3 over 10 is irrational. Before we proceed to another lesson, you can now answer the following activities on your module. These are what's more on page 9, what I have learned on page 10, what I can do on page 11. Let's proceed to lesson 2. Determine between what two consecutive integers the square root of a number lie. In your previous lesson, you have learned how to describe the principal root if it is rational or irrational. Now, let us review about perfect square integers. The perfect squares, also called square of a number, are the squares of the integers. On page 12, complete the table by continuing to answer from 2 to 15. Number 1 was already done for you. Try to remember them up to 15. <music> Let's proceed to page 15. What is it? If a principal root is an irrational number, the easiest way you can do is to determine between what two integers the square root of a number lie. Now, let us start with our discussion on how to determine the two consecutive integers where the square root of a number lie. First, the square root of 12. Think of two consecutive perfect square integers where 12 is in between of them. So we have 9 and 16. Take the square roots of these numbers. Since the principal root of square root of 9 is 3, while the principal root of square root of 16 is 4, thus 
The square root of 12 is between 3 and 4. Next, the square root of 18. Think of two consecutive perfect square integers where 18 is in between of them. So we have 16 and 25. Take the square roots of these numbers. Since the principal root of square root of 16 is 4, while the principal root of square root of 25 is 5, thus the square root of 18 is between 4 and 5. Next, square root of 40. Think of two consecutive perfect square integers where 40 is in between of them. So we have 36 and 49. Take the square roots of these numbers. Since the principal root of square root of 36 is 6, while the principal root of square root of 49 is 7, thus square root of 40 is between 6 and 7. Lastly, square root of 175. Think of two consecutive perfect square integers where 175 is between of them. So we have 169 and 196. Take the square roots of these numbers. Since the principal root of square root of 169 is 13, while the principal root of square root of 196 is 14, thus square root of 175 is between 13 and 14. You did great in watching and listening. Now, you can confidently answer the following activities on your module. These are what's more on page 17, what I have learned on page 18, what I can do on page 19. That ends our lesson today. We hope you learned something. See you on our next episode on the air. Keep safe!